Elgato sent me the Elgato Facecam Mark II. Well, have it. I do have the Elgato Facecam Mark I here as well, and we're gonna compare them. I'm having a bit of a cold, so if you're like, she sounds a bit weird, it's because they're cold. I do need to notice that this video is sponsored by Elgato, so thank you for that, Elgato. They also sent me this backplate for the teleprompter, meaning that you can also use this webcam for the teleprompter. I haven't seen it on their web shop yet, so I think they might be releasing this in the future. Let's open up the package. We do have a little manual here. It tells you how to remove the stand, how to put it on external thread, how to use the privacy shutter, how to attach it to your computer and how to wipe it. Safety instructions. This must be the webcam itself. There we go. This is it. This is the privacy shutter. So you can just shut this open. It's a bit hard to see because it's like super small. My fingers are a lot bigger than, you know, than this button is. Like, so it's just basically a slide you can open and close. This is how it looks like open and this is closed. Then underneath we have a stand. And this stand is actually the same as the Pro. So the Facecam Pro has the same stand. As we can see, the original Facecam has a different stand. Mine is crooked on it, I know. <laughs> and the thing is, this one is so much more attached to the stand than the original one is. But for me, it resulted in that I find it hard to like turn it on here. It can turn a bit if you don't turn it correctly on it. So this movement looks a bit smoother on this one. But if you look at this one, if you open this up, we could actually move this as well. If you look at the bottom, we do see this. And if we pull this up, we can turn this around. And basically this is a thread. And then we can remove this whole stand underneath, meaning that we can replace it on any standard camera mounting system. For example, the Elgato multi-mount. And then we have a cable. Elgato started labeling their cables, so it should say the speed. It's a 3.5, 5 gigabits per second cable. I'm a bit clumsy sometimes, so I'm not sure which cable came with the original one. <laughs> so I can't compare the cables. But you can just plug this in the back and this side in the computer. Make sure to put it in a 3.0 because then it gives more speed and you will get a lot better quality out of the camera. The Mark II is a lot less thick, <laughs> but it's a lot wider, I think. Oh uh, yeah, a little bit wider, a little bit wider, but the height is a lot less bulky. If we look at the stand, it ends a lot quicker, so it doesn't take up as much space. It says that they both have the Elgato Prime Lens, the uh, 1080p 60fps 24mm, 1.2.4, it says that on both of them. They both have an indication light. Let's attach them to the computer and see how they actually look like because we want to see how they actually perform better than how the hardware looks like. So this is the Mark One, the Elgato Facecam Mark One. And I was like, this is a pretty decent webcam. Pretty good field of view, you can also scrimp it down if you want to. I did set some settings differently myself, so I adjusted it the way I wanted it. You can do that with the Elgato Camera Hub. This is how it looks like. You can just select your camera. Now you can select all the settings in here. So contrast, saturation, sharpness, you can do shutter speed, ISO. Uh, you can have it like be viewed or not viewed here, but because we're having it in OBS right now, OBS is taking priority and we can't see it in here. But I was shocked when I attached the Mark II because this is the Mark II. I was like, oh my God, these colors? These look realistic. Because I'm having a cold, and you can see I'm having a cold. I'm not sure if that is what I wanted. And also I got like a sting here from a mosquito, and I don't think you wanted to see that, but you see me in all glory with this camera. So here's a little side by side. Uh, let me just look in between the camera so I don't really look at one of you, which is weird, because this is the Mark I, and this is the Mark II. Again, you can set like the colors, everything the way you want to, and I like it this way. Oh my god, this one? Pretty good. So the Mark I comes in at $130 and 130 euros, and the Facecam 2 comes in at $150 slash 150 euros. Meaning that for 20 bucks more, you get this quality over this quality. Tell me it's worth it without telling me it's worth it. Again, you can mess with the settings like a lot. So you can set it to your liking. This is how I like them both most. 
I do have natural light coming from this side and I do have a ring light there. If your camera looks bad, I always recommend putting some kind of light near your camera because then you always look a little bit better. But look at my eyes. Oh my God, that looks so good. Look at that ring light reflecting in it. I am super, super happy with this camera. So let's look at the difference in the software. This is the Elgato Mark I. And here, if you look, we can zoom in. Hello. We can have the contrast difference. We can set the saturation. We can set the sharpness, so not sharp at all, or super sharp, eh, like somewhere in between. We can set the exposure on automatic, but I like it better if we do it manual. You can set it on average or on counterweighted. If you do it yourself, I think it looks a little bit more realistic. Save for the white balance, you can set it on automatic, but if you set it yourself and start wiggling this around, I have some whites here and I try to match those whites to actual white. Something like this, that would look better. And then we can also cancel the noise. So you see some noise here, we can cancel that if you want with this filter as well or not. I think they both have its use cases. I think I'm gonna leave it off for now. We also have some effects here, we can mirror it. Oh, I look so weird mirrored. <laughs> this is how people see me. Uh, we can flip ourselves upside down. We can even blur the background to make it look like a DSLR camera or we can have like a background. You can also add your own picture. Or we can set the blur strength as well to make it super blurry or not blurry at all. We go, we can turn it off. And we could get the eye contact. So now I'm kind of looking at you, even though I'm not looking at you. So I'm looking at the screen, but I'm looking at you. I'm looking at you. I'm not looking at you. I'm not directly looking at you, but it looks like I'm looking at you, which is kind of creepy and kind of cool. <laughs> so if I turn it off, this is what I was looking at. And it looks like I'm looking you in the eye. But I'm not. So if you now switch to the face cam mark two. Okay, some of the settings have reset. I didn't save it, seems like. <laughs> so what we can do is we can zoom in and out here as well. We can have the same things here with the contrast. I like a bit of contrast. Saturation, Ooh, like a little bit of color in it, mm, don't we? Sharpness, see somewhere here. Same with the exposure, we can set auto exposure, but as you can see, it's so much better on this camera. Average spot. I mean, I do like the auto exposure here on this camera. It's 1.6 shutter speed and the ISO is 122 right now. So it does tell you what it's actually working with. If we turn that off, we could actually do that again. Uh, so set this on 1.6 and 120, I believe it was on. But like, I like this. This looks good. Dynamic range, we can set it on high. High dynamic range or standard. So if you want more darks, so now you have more darks. So it feels more gamey, I guess. We also have the white balance that we can do automatically. It does it a lot better than the Mark I, if you ask me. But I do like to set the white balance myself. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong if you do it yourself. And then here, the processing, we can also have the noise filter that we had on the Mark I, but then we can set it on light, medium, or high. So we do have quite some more options here as well. Besides from that, we also have face tracking. So we can have face tracking and we can zoom. So for example, we can zoom like this. And now if I move my face, Hello, it's gonna follow it. I wouldn't zoom that much though. Like if I zoom it like this, it can follow my face or not. We can also set like presets of how you want it to look, which you can actually also interact with with the stream deck. And we also have effects. Again, we can set the eye contact on and now I'm definitely not looking you in the eye. I'm not looking you in the eye. I'm, I'm not looking you in the eye. Look, I'm not looking you in the eye but it looks like I'm looking you in the eye. Hmm. And we can have a blur in the background. Again, we can say how sharp we want it or how not sharp we want it. <laughs> it looks so weird I'm looking at the thing when I'm actually doing this. Like, uh, We can have all different kinds of backgrounds or add your own background, right? 
So those are the difference within the software itself. If you guys want to buy either the Mark 1 or the Mark 2, I'll leave links to the Elgato website underneath in the description. If you go to that link, that will be an affiliate link. If you go there, make sure to accept the cookies because then I will be getting some money if you buy anything from that website. You won't pay anything extra, but I will get some extra money. Even better, you will get a discount because if you use code TREE on the website, you will get 5% off. Yeah, you got a discount for giving me money. There's a train passing by and the whole house is shaking. So if you see a little bit of shake, uh, you can see that the Mark 1 can't handle the shake as much as the Mark 2. Like literally everything in the house is shaking, by the way. So mm, a train check for people living close to railroad. If you want to see more Elgato products, make sure to check out this playlist. I've got another cool playlist right here. Subscribe right here. And YouTube thinks you're going to like this video. It was really hard aiming with two cameras.